Hello, hello everybody. Hope you're all doing really well. Now uh, today I'm down at a waterfall called Ammonite Falls. It's just a, a gorgeous little fall not far from Nanaimo. Hang on, who's that? Oh, I thought I had this place to myself. Usually I have this place to myself, but there seems to be another photographer here. I'm gonna zoom in and see who it is. Oh god, it's that wanker photographer. What's his name? Hardcastle. Oh, he's my arch nemesis. He's always moving in on my secret spots. Look at him, pretty boy. Ugh, can't stand that guy, and he's a Yorkshireman to boot. <laughs> if he does another uh, spectacular fall. Oh, 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 oh. Really up the viewership of my videos to have someone tumbling down with a tripod flying all over the place. I think he's contemplating. A bit of a wuss actually. I think he's scared. Well, Ammonite Falls is running pretty good right now. Now, Ammonite Falls is actually not very far from the uh, city of Nanaimo, which is on Vancouver Island. And like the last falls I, I photographed, uh, in the summer it's pretty much dried up. But we've had a bit of rain, and as you can see, it's, it's uh, coming down pretty good. Now, I have been here a number of times, but I've always had trouble finding a good composition uh, you know the, the falls looks really good but it's it's finding a, a, a meaningful foreground there are a few rocks and such in the foreground that I might be able to use and the ferns are still looking pretty good so I might be able to utilize those as well but uh, the falls is definitely looking really nice just a matter of finding a foreground that will draw the viewer into the frame or into the photograph and that's the hard part uh, I, I try to find something that relates to the background or, or kind of brings you on a little kind of journey through the frame, so to speak. So that's the job I'm going to have to do right now is try and find out a half decent foreground. Okay, I think I found a composition that I really like have these ferns uh, in the foreground, these beautiful sword ferns. And then there's actually a little bit of fall color. I mean, it's pretty small, but it adds a little bit of color, some yellow leaves there. And then I have some ferns at the bottom of the frame as well. So it kind of really fills the frame. And in the background, I have Ammonite Falls, which is just gorgeous right now. Okay, so this is the composition that I have, and I really quite like it. I've tried to fill the frame with all these sword ferns up here. And I like these ones that kind of jut in through the bottom there. So that fills that, uh, that right side really quite nicely. And I'll probably darken this area here. Now, I, I really like the little bit of full color that I have in the foreground as well. Just adds a little bit more depth and uh, a little bit more interest. And then of course we have the, uh, the waterfall in the background. So you'll notice that even though the waterfall is the main subject, 
it kind of takes a secondary role in this image. It's not just a, a picture of a big waterfall, it's the environment around it. So I think this will work quite well. Uh, the only thing that I, I don't like, and I'll just zoom in here, is that right there. That's the ass of Gavin Hardcastle. He's always getting in my shots. That's why I don't like photographing with other people. It's just so annoying. Okay, now in last week's video, uh, many of you seemed to enjoy the uh, self-critique. So I think I, I'm going to do that again in this video and kind of go over my successes and, and not so successful images. Now on this particular day, I only took two images, so there's not a lot to go over. Uh, I'll start off with the, the first image here. Uh, the composition I, I really like, and as I said in my explanation, the waterfall really takes a secondary role in the, in the whole composition. Even though it's somewhat the main subject, uh, it, I made it quite small in the frame because I really wanted to show the environment and the surroundings around the waterfall. Uh, so as far as processing goes, what I did for this photograph is I, I did darken the edges uh, considerably just to draw your attention to the center of the photograph. And then I lightened up the, uh, the ferns at the bottom here because I really like those because they kind of point into the center of the frame and draw your eye into the center here. The uh, the ferns on the on the right side here, I also lightened quite a bit uh, because I find them just fascinating and they they have some beautiful texture and color in there, so I find them quite interesting. The uh, touch of color, uh, yellow down here, I brightened up a little bit too, uh, just to add a, a bit of depth and uh, some interest in the, in the bottom left hand side of the, of the frame here. You'll also notice that the brightest area in the whole image is the waterfall and that's where I want the viewer's eye to go. In an ideal world I would have preferred a little bit more directional light uh, but you know I, <laughs> I say that in, in all of my videos and I'm always harping on about the light but it's true uh, any kind of directional light will, will certainly give your image a little bit of depth and oomph but uh, you know we have to kind of make do with with what we have and I think I did an okay job in this respect. Now I have to be honest with you this isn't my first time that I've, I've approached this waterfall with this composition and I'll show you an image that I took back in 2012. Now the first thing you'll notice about this uh, photograph is that it's very green, uh, really saturated and that was because I took it in June. So the foliage is all nice and fresh and this particular year there was quite a bit of rain in the spring so the waterfall was looking really good as well. The one thing you will notice that's quite different is that the waterfall is quite a bit bigger in this frame even though the ferns are more or less the same size as the last image. So the photograph that I took recently was with a Nikon 16 to 35 millimeter and I had it racked out at 19 millimeters, so very wide and that's why the waterfall is quite small in the frame. Now this image here I took with a Canon 17 to 40 but I had it racked out to 38 millimeters. So the narrower angle of view and the longer focal length has really brought that background forward and that's why the waterfall looks so much larger in the frame. There's no wrong or right way to uh, approach a composition and there's no perfect uh, focal length for each composition. As far as focal lengths go, I, I guess it really boils down to uh, how much dominance you want that background in your final image and how much emphasis you want on it. So by using a longer focal length, I've brought more emphasis to the waterfall, whereas by using a wider lens in the more recent image, it's put far less emphasis on the waterfall and more on the ferns in the foreground. So two different approaches, like I said, no wrong or right way, just two different ways to approach the same subject. <laughs> well, it wasn't balls deep after all, was it? <laughs> 
Okay, that's dedication for you. That's what you have to do if you want to be a real photographer. <laughs> because it's the deepest part of the whole stream. <laughs> I'm not sure if I got a, a very good composition. Um, well, first of all, I had quite a bit of uh, moisture on my lens, and I, of course, I didn't bring a, a lens cloth with me. Uh, but I don't know. It looked quite. It looked quite neat. At least you have a bit of white water in the foreground to kind of just to add a little bit of interest. Nobody said uh, getting shots was easy or good shots. <laughs> and then that all was that good either. <laughs> Okay, now this is the other image that I took. Now this is a raw file. I haven't done anything to this, and uh, it was a it was a location that both Gavin and I uh, took turns in photographing. We had to wade right into the creek there, and of course it was the deepest part of the creek. So uh, I ended up taking my pants off to get in there. <laughs> um, I'll be interested to see uh, what Gavin comes up with, and I'm sure he'll he'll put his version in the video, or hopefully he'll put it in so we can see what it looks like. Uh, but as far as my version goes, I, I don't think it works. Uh, first of all, the, the right hand side here, uh, it, it just doesn't look balanced to me. There's a lot of mess up in the, uh, the left hand corner here, especially with the brown leaves. And there's quite a bit more water flow on the right uh, as compared to the, the left here. And it just looks off balance to me. You may have noticed that in the first photograph I took, the waterfall was somewhat um, blocked by branches and such. And it's it's the same here, but it, it doesn't work. I, I, I almost feel like I, I wish I'd moved over further to the uh, to the right. And I know that Gavin did, so it will be interesting to see what what he came up with. Uh, okay, the other thing that you may notice, and if I zoom in. Uh, my focus was off uh, by quite a bit actually, uh, so uh, another fail there, <laughs> but it, it happens. Uh, sometimes if I don't pay attention to what I'm doing, and in this case I obviously didn't care enough about the photograph to really put a lot of effort into it, uh, it, it just does it's just not going to work. Is it worth going back to try again? I, I think so. Uh, I think if I did move to the right, I might be able to get something a little bit more decent and pay more attention to what I'm doing with the focus. You'll also notice, and I've done this a number of times, especially with wide angles down here. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but uh, keep an eye on those corners and the outside of the frame for uh, tripod legs. Uh, happens quite often. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit tricky. This particular image was very tricky to get in because this this rock here is a slab, it's very slippery, so it was really hard to set the tripod up so it wouldn't keep sliding back towards me. So I had to find little notches in the rock to try and stabilize it. So I ended up including a leg of the tripod. So just keep an eye out for things like that in your own photographs. Okay, now since we're talking about things creeping into the frame, I just thought I'd bring up this photograph again. Uh, Maybe some of you noticed, maybe some of you didn't notice. Uh, thanks to David Fletcher uh, in the comments for pointing this out. But if you look over to the right here of this image from last week's video, you'll notice that what seems to be a rock is, <laughs> is actually my backpack. So big fail there. Uh, I ended up cloning it out because I didn't have any other images with the pack not in the frame. So uh, thanks David for pointing that out. Uh, I really appreciate it. Right, so I had a little bit of drama, a little bit of tomfoolery, action. Uh, I even had a little bit of uh, photography in that video. <laughs> uh, before I leave you guys, I just wanted to cover a couple of things. Uh, Okay, you now Gavin, Gavin Hardcastle, for those of you that don't know him, he has a, a YouTube channel. He's had it for quite a while actually, but he's just started to uh, put a bit more effort into it. So good for you, Gavin. Uh, if you haven't seen his, his videos, they're, they're really funny and uh, he's very knowledgeable as well. So I'll leave a link at the end of the video if you're interested in, in watching Gavin's uh, videos. I, I highly recommend them. And also they're, they're local, so they have a lot of interest for me as well. Uh, 
my website. I have uh, a new website. Uh, my old one, actually it's not even that old. I was having quite a few uh, problems with it. So I've gone over to uh, a different uh, platform. Uh, now my, my old website is uh, Quiet Light Photo Adventures. I haven't transferred the domain name over yet. So right now it's under adamgibbsphoto.com. So if you'd like to go and visit it, it's still a work in progress, but the meat and potatoes are all, are all in there. And uh, if I can try and keep up with it, I'm gonna start putting all of the images that I take from each of my videos uh, so you get, you know, so you can have a closer look at them. And uh, lastly, uh, workshops. Uh, I'm still offering workshops for 2019. I have six. Uh, they are filling up fast. Uh, actually, the Tonquin Valley uh, workshop, I only have two spots left. Now, if I do fill it, uh, I might offer another one. I'm not sure yet, uh, but there's still a few spots left for Vancouver Island. I have three workshops in Port Renfrew this year, or next year, 2019. Uh, Hornby Island, which is in February, I have a couple of spots left there. And the Talus, or the Talon, uh, Talus Lodge, I have a number of spots available there. And actually, if you sign up, um, before the end of the month, then I can give you a 10% discount uh, because I need to get it signed up so that uh, I can give the lodge deposits as quickly as possible before they fill up with uh, other guests. So if you are interested or thinking about it, then uh, that would be great if you can join me for 2019. All right, everybody, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you would like to see more uh, content where I go over uh, kind of the images that I took for the day and kind of what I see, see as mistakes or fails, be sure to leave uh, a comment below. And as always, if you give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and if you like the content of my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks ever so much, everybody, and I'll catch you next time. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>